Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for a special edition of the show. Uh, yeah, I didn't have the green screen all that set up because uh, honestly it's like 2 in the morning, uh, Sunday morning on the 19th of Sun uh, November, uh, recording the uh, uh, Thanksgiving episode. So I uh, worked the quote day job and by the time I got home and blah, blah, blah. So we're kind of do it the, um, you know, an easy way. But uh, so I've got three wines here that we're going to do for Thanksgiving. Um, so I know, yeah, I did, we, had, we had a burgundy episode. Now I'm doing Thanksgiving. It's just the way it worked out uh, schedule wise. And then I'll have, I don't know, like two more burgundy. And then I think I have the Corvin. And then I got Christmas, New Year's. And then the rest of the burgundy ones. And then a Corvin somewhere in there. And then we end with, uh, not end, but... Um, then we'll eventually get to uh, Valentine's Day. Anyway, um, I had thoughts of doing both the Christmas and Thanksgiving episode tonight, but then um, hello, but then I realized that uh, it's getting kind of late, and also I don't have the champagne uh, cold enough. It's still just room temperature, so uh, that's good. we're going to do that for uh, Christmas. So I'll, I'll record that later. But uh, so what did I do? Um, I bought six wines, bought a six pack from Psalm Select. Psalm Select, they gave me a little, gave you a little, not me, the, the, everybody got this. A uh, little, little booklet on all the wines. It was a six pack for $199, so it was free shipping. Uh, got the wine on Friday, um, and I kind of had plans Friday, and then uh, even though I didn't stay out really late Friday, by the time I got home after watching Justice League, which, yeah. You know, I was telling some people at work that, um, you know, in general, I like the DC comic book characters better than the Marvel characters or more that I knew them better, at least the major ones. Um, but like the Marvel movies are just fantastic. And uh, of all the DC movies so far, Wonder Woman has really been the only one that I was like, yeah, uh, the rest have been like, yeah, I, you know, they're trying to catch up and. They, they haven't been taking like six years or whatever, how long Marvel's been doing it to really build it up and then get the Avengers together. You know, they DC's got to like do it super fast. And then uh, somebody at work let me know that I didn't realize it. Maybe I did that um, they are planning a DC Marvel combination movie. So DC's got a lot of catching up to do in a short amount of time. So anyway, if you like the DC universe or you just want to make sure you're seeing everything, go see it. It's all right. Thor was better. But uh, anyway, uh, by the time I got home, it was, it wasn't that it was late, but I was super tired. So, uh, so I do it tonight, Saturday night into Sunday morning. So I uh, did three wines. So I'm going to do these three wines here. Um, they picked six wines as a more traditional Thanksgiving. If you're not from the United States or, or I guess Canada, um, you know, we have a harvest holiday here in the United States. Turkey is the major um, uh, protein that you have, major meat, along with ham. Uh, you'll have cranberries and stuffing and pumpkin pie and all this other, all this other stuff. So uh, you got a lot of stuff going on here with Thanksgiving. So uh, anyway, so they picked six wines that would go with an average Thanksgiving meal. So like I said, um, I decided to split it up into two episodes really just because not that I didn't want to not do six wines in, you know, in one day. I just didn't want to do six wines in one show. So we're going to do these three wines. And I decided to pick the three French wines since I just came from Burgundy and from France. And funny enough, all three of these wines are from areas I went to. We have a wine from Alsace and then we have a red and a white from Burgundy. Um, so I'm real excited to try these out. 
like I said, I paid $1.99 for the six pack. And um, well, let's just get right into it uh, before I take up any more time. So the first wine, this is the um, Derler Cade uh, Leo D. Bellsbrunnen Riesling 2012. Um, if you actually go to their website, um, they sell it on their website. I don't know if you can buy it and have it shipped to the United States, but in Europe, it is fourteen euro sixty, um, which that translates into U.S. dollars about seventeen dollars and twenty two cents. You know, depending on you know where we're at on the euro right now, it's one point one eight. Um, they didn't take it out beyond the two decimal points, but uh, so it's about seventeen dollars U.S. Um, I didn't look to see how much is of it, how much it is in the U.S., but I would say it might be a little bit more. It might be closer to $20 um, U.S. once you got to import it here and everyone's got to take their cut. So it could, be, it could be a little bit more expensive, maybe $20 to $25. Um, but anyway, who, who, who are they, right? So um, they've been around since, the eight, since 1871. Uh, they've had five successive generations of wine growers. The... Um, Let's see if it tells me who the current one is. I'm sure it does. I just didn't go into it that hard. Um, da, da, da. Let's see. Jean. Let's see. Jean-Pierre and Jean are the five successive gener... Oh, it says... Uh, gener so, yeah. Jean, Georges, Georges, Jean-Pierre, and then today, Jean. I guess Jean is the... Um, I guess they have a lot of Jeans. Jean, Jean, I, there's a lot of them. Uh, I guess that whoever the current the current winemaker is named Jean. Uh, 1998, he marries Ludivine, daughter of Leon and Nicole Helcade, wine growers in Gubweiler. And then from the 2000 vintage, the winery took uh, Ludivine's parents' plots and vines uh, over, and the estate was named Derlercade. So they combined the two things anyway um they have a quite a wide they have a wide range of wines that they do and um let's see i said this is from 2012 and let's dive into it on the website it mentions something about being um demi-sec or medium dry so let's see see what we got going on here Uh, they did say that they are midway between Colmar, which is the which was the closest town to where I was at in Ribaville for uh, the Trimbach interview, and um, Mulhouse. They said they are exactly midway, 25 kilometers of Colmar and, Mid and Mulhouse. So, not quite the southern part of Alsace, but. Not not the northern reaches. So let's check it out. Fairly aromatic nose. I get a bit of uh, wax, plastic type of, you know, uh, petrol is basically what we would call it. On the nose, I get an orange, orange peel tangerine kind of a um, orange candy you know those orange candies that are like coated in sugar you know they, they look like a slice of orange kind of like that a bit of um, banana runt a bit of um, uh, oh, something it really escapes me Almost like a, um, uh, it's, it's another candy type of, of, of a fruit aroma. I would say a touch of watermelon, a touch of ras really raspberry. No, it's like that. Um, you know, those, uh, 
I don't know who makes these raspberry candies, but they're like a they're like a raspberry candy. The way they're designed looks like a raspberry, and the little <clears throat> package is like kind of a almost the same color as this um, tablecloth with the raspberry on it, and and it's like it's like liquid inside. It's a hard candy, but it's liquid inside. So it really reminds me. Actually, reminds me of the exterior of you know the the hard shell of that candy. Uh, no, really, no evidence of any wood on this. We don't have a lot of spices going on. Really, nothing vegetal. After let's let's get into the taste of it. And as I'm getting ready to taste it, I realize I should tell you it smells sweet. And it is. It's um, it's not it's not super sweet. It's not one. It's not completely dry. It's a medium dry, a medium sweet. Um, I would say on the drier side of things as far as the sweetness level. Um, very high acidity. And, and on the flavor profile, it's very much, very much like the nose um, you don't really get that petrol so much on, on the, on the palate. Um, it does feel a little warm though. It's pretty, probably just cause I'm, I am drinking this at room temperature, but it's only 13% alcohol. It needs to be chilled. That's for darn sure. But that orange and tangerine is, I would say, the predominant uh, fruit flavor for me. Um, a touch of lemon head. Um, you know, very, very candy-fied uh, fruit flavors, but uh, very fresh, very ripe. Uh, we're not talking tart here. Um, very tasty wine. It's got a touch of sweetness to it. Um, I could totally see you making this as your aperitif. You know, get get the, get the juices flowing. Um you could serve it just on its own, just to kind of get things going. Um, if you want to serve it for uh, one of your first lighter courses, if you've got some cheeses, if you've got uh, some light meats, nothing heavy, uh, like an antipasto um, type of thing, or char charcuterie, um, you could do that. Um, if you have, like, say... Uh, a salad that maybe has like a candied walnut or candied pecan type of thing. I think that the since there's a little bit of sweetness to the wine, it'll play off really well with this. Depending on depending on the, the dressing you're using, you don't want something too acidic and too too sour because um, it, it won't balance well. But if you had something that had a little, it doesn't have to be a sweet dressing, but something that has a, a touch of tartness to it, but a, a little bit of fruit, you know, like a you could have like a raspberry vinaigrette or something like that. That'd be kind of cool. Um, you know, if you're going to start off with a fruit salad, that would be perfect for this. So um, it's really tasty. Um, considering it's like a $20 bottle of wine, um, you're not breaking the bank on it. And uh, I think it's well made. Um, definitely needs to be chilled. Like I said, it was the alcohol, even though it's only 13%, it's definitely coming through. Um, but really good wine. I like it. All right, let's move on to uh, the next wine. Move that over here. All right, so the next wine we've got here is the Domaine de l'Arche Pernand Vergelez. You know, I never actually found out exactly how to pronounce that little area behind the hill of Corton. Uh, the Le Combot, Le Le. C O M B O T T E S combots, combots. Um, anyway, uh, Burgundy white wine. This is 100% Chardonnay. Um, this is uh, when you look it up on Wine Searcher. It said the last available um, price, uh, which was October of. Oh, sorry, 2017 was an average price of $39. So I'm going to guess this is, you know, between 30 and 
you know, maybe three thirty-five and forty-five dollars uh, retail in the U.S. Um, so who are they? So anyway, they are a um, uh, a family-owned winery, and it was established in the nineteen forties. The current winemaker is Etienne Delarche. Uh, he's the I think the third generation, if I remember correctly. Um, and the the town that this these grapes come from and were well, they they, they have acreage in, in several places, but um, where this these grapes come from, that town is like a small little town. There's a so you have the hill of Corton, which all the wine geeks and psalms like freak out about because they make some pretty amazing wines there. And I got went to the almost the top of it. And um, in next week's episode, uh, over when I went to um, uh, Guillaume, uh, after that I went to the Hill of Corton, and they actually have vineyard. They have vineyards on Corton, so I'll just pictures of that in that episode. I've already I've already uh, headed to that one, but. Um, so this area is there's there's another hill behind it or to the west of Corton, and this little village sits there and they make some really good wines there that are just not as expensive as Corton. So uh, I'm excited to try that. And let me look at the fact sheet here. Um, they say that the vineyard faces east and sits high upon high up on the slope between 700. 750 and 900 feet. Soils combine clay and limestone with some marl, which imparts a sensation of minerality to the wine. Uh, hand harvested, uh, destemmed and pressed, fermented on indigenous yeast in French oak, French oak barrels, aged in older French oak barrels for one year. They unfine it and unfiltered. So it's not fined or filtered. So you, know, you might have some particles in there. You may have a little bit of uh, extra sediment. I mean, it is a white wine, so it won't be too bad, but it might be slightly cloudy um, instead of like that crystal clear uh, white wines that we were so used to. Um, yes, that's it. Because uh, in the rest, they, they actually tell you what they smell and taste in the wine. I tried to skip that. Uh, someone said in my Halloween episode that I shouldn't rely on the producer's Tasty notes, and I, I don't think I used them to say it was in the wine. I might have said, I get it or I don't, but um, anyway. Let's see here. I was going to see if there's anything in here other than what I looked up online to see if there was any. Nope, because basically they're just going to say um, it's exact, pretty much just whatever I uh, read on there. Uh, let's, get, let's get into this wine. So I mean, immediately you know this is Chardonnay. Uh, there's a there's a popcorn, slightly burnt uh, aroma to it. Not quite buttery, more like a dry popcorn. And this is one of those wines where, like, you know what? That is such the overriding aroma that sometimes it's hard to. It's hard to get past it, or you have to swirl it like oh. So you get a bit of, I would say peach, a touch of a touch of lemon, but not a whole lot. Now that popcorn's starting to blow off. Yeah, I would say the peach, and then you've got. It's not a very highly aromatic wine. It's very closed. A touch of butterscotch. Yeah, a touch of spice. Uh, I'm gonna say that probably comes from the um, ferment fermenting in the French oak. Bit of orange, orange peel. Yeah. All right, let's let's taste it.
It's pretty tasty. Like there's a, I wouldn't call it silkiness, but just a really nice, really nice mouthfeel. Um, acid's pretty high on it. Uh, alcohol's not too terribly high. It might be the same as this, it's 13%, but it doesn't feel as hot. Um, yeah, 13%. So, um, no, it's, 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 it tastes really good. Uh, the flavor profile is, is uh, similar to the nose, where but the popcorn is not the prominent flavor. Um, it's your orange, it's your lemon, uh, a little bit of lemon in there. Um, yeah, and there's a, there's a tartness to the fruit. Uh, it's not, I wouldn't say it's underripe necessarily, but there's a slight tartness to the fruit. Um, it tastes like a Chardonnay. Like, this is what a Burgundian Chardonnay that does not seeing a ton of oak, uh, at least in that new oak, um, would taste like. Yeah, I mean, it, it's spot on. Uh, it's about 40 bucks. So, I mean, you're not going to do wrong. It's a very well-made wine. It tastes really good. Um, it definitely should please a lot of people. It even smells like a winery. Yeah. Let's see what they say. They talk about spice, crushed stones. Okay, lemon zest, all right. Light on the tongue. Fl apples? Yeah. I don't get anything. They said it should be, there's a peppery finish, but I don't. Maybe like a white pepper. Like you could say this is like a really like rich gruner. I can see that. Power suggestion is really, really good. All right. Let is, let's move on to wine number three. Move this off to the side. So wine number three. I'm excited about doing this because I don't know if I've ever had a wine from this AOC or AOP, whatever it is. Uh, this is the Domain Conferon Cote d'O. Uh, it is a Bourgogne Passet to Grand. It looks like it's Passet Tout Grain. Um, and I'm assuming that I'm pronouncing the French you know, fairly close. What, why I'm excited about this... <clears throat> It is effectively, it's a, I don't call it a field blend, but it's a blend of Gamay, which I think a lot of you know that I love Beaujolais, like Cru Beaujolais, Gamay, and Pinot Noir. Um, so way back in the day, Philip the Bold uh, decided that Gamay was harmful to humans and ordered it to be completely uprooted in Burgundy. Uh, it's like the 1300s, I think, 1380 might have been when he decreed it. Um, well, there was still a little gamay that, that kind of survived that didn't get completely pulled up besides Beaujolais. So, um, these are, it's kind of like they are, um, let's close these out. Don't need them up anymore. Oh, this is the, I mentioned 2014. Boom, 2014. Um, Anyway, so it's, I wouldn't call it a field blend, but there's lots of co-plantation um, of these grapes or have in the past. And I'm trying to pull up their little, oh, where did I, anyway, here we go. Pull these guys up. They usually have pretty good information. Um, let's see here. I'm just going to kind of read off because this doesn't really have as many of the um, as many of the other notes as other places do. So they don't use clones. They tend to not destem, and they use a long, cold soak uh, maceration. Um, it's a 50/50 blend. At least, yeah, 50/50 blend of Pinot Noir and Gamay. Um, then they start talking into actual. Tasting notes. Uh, on the KNL Merchants wine page, it's sixteen ninety nine. Um, it is between around nineteen to twenty dollars on Wine Searcher. Out of uh, one is in Berkeley, California. The other one's in Portland, Oregon. So um, let's just say it's anywhere from seventeen to twenty two dollars uh, retail. So I'm really excited about trying this. 
Wow. I mean, I read about this wine when I was doing some studying recently on, on Burgundy. And um, the way it was described, and they may not have said it this way, but the way I the way I interpreted it's almost a best of both worlds of Burgundy and Beaujolais. Because you get all that spice that you get, um, that just rich spiciness character that you get a lot of times from Beaujolais, but sometimes you get it from Burgundy, from Pinot Noir, and so it can be kind of confusing. You may say, well, this is a Beaujolais, and it's actually Burgundy. Um, Yeah, I mean, it's like cinnamon and clove and potpourri. It's like you walked into a spice shop. It is really what it smells like. You've got dried fruit in here, dried cherry. I mean, it's like it's like walking into old school, um, you know, world market. I mean that, that that type of like the woods there, it, but it's very spice driven. It's it there's fruit, but it's it's not it's not the predominant um, not the predominant aroma. I cannot wait to like crack this crack this bottle open, like to actually drink it. Oh wow! This is a wine that I could literally sit back and I could smell for an hour and never drink it, and I would be totally completely satisfied. I love wines like that. Let's try it, man. Definitely spice driven. Um, a touch of bramble to it, a touch of pine to it. Um, I would say cranberry to me is the more is the more predominant uh, uh, fruit dried, not um, not ripe and luscious or anything like that. You know, a dried cranberry, um, a dry cherry, a potpourri. There's a touch a touch of earthiness in there on the on the nose, like you know fresh potting soil, and it was like a it was like a whiff a whiff of manure. Tannins are not heavy. It's a touch of it right there on the on the gums, um, but it's not overly powerful. If it's if it's a if it's thirteen above on alcohol, it's extremely well contained. It is twelve percent. Yeah, you don't need high alcohol wines, guys. Um, this is a perfect food wine. I mean, this is a wine that's just going to go great, especially with. How seasoned, how 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 like turkeys and hams uh, are seasoned, and you've got um, you know sweet potatoes. They got tons of like sugar, and, you know, cinnamon and all that. This is gonna this would go really great with that type of uh, and you know that type of things. The stuffing, like this is your main course wine. These are these are the wines that kind of get you started. You know, especially how come I got all that? Well, anyway. Uh, especially with, um, you know, little, little sweetness on, on the, um, uh, Riesling there. And over time, this is just going to develop and it's going to, uh, um, really expand. And it's going to get all these secondary tertiary flavors and aromas that are going to start coming to the fore because it's not going to be so spice dominant. Mm. <clears throat> a lot of the stuff is like kind of subtle so that's why touch or a hint it's not overpowering the spice is there it's really the, what drives it but you get secondary tertiary flavors and aromas and these kind of fleeting moments of things i think this this wine would be outstanding at a thanksgiving dinner um if it's it's not even 
you know, it's like 20 bucks or less, that's a great buy. Um, you know, nothing against these two wines. Um, I like them, but this is like personally just like what I like. I love this wine. These wines, I would not hesitate to drink. If I was at someone's house, if I actually bought the wines myself, if I'm at a bar, I'm at a restaurant, I will definitely enjoy them um, for what they are. Um, but this would be the wine that I'd be like, steals the show of, of the three. Uh, amazing uh, for these three wines, or that wine in particular. Well, we're gonna wrap it up. We're already half an hour. Um, so I wanna thank everyone to, uh, for stopping by. Click the links above up here. Remember, this is not the website. I don't always, I think I just assume you know I'm going to the website, but since um, a lot of these videos are not on my, most people watch these videos not on my website, like on YouTube or iFood TV or on their, T I think TiVo still gets this stuff. Uh, but anyway, the website, click the links above to friend me up. Click the links below for more information about these wines. Uh, hit the donate button over there. Um, send me a few ducats. And um, you can find these wines, which, you know, they, some of them are definitely uh, distributed in the United States. If you can find them, definitely pick them up for Thanksgiving. I know it's only a couple days away, but um, yeah. These are, these are really great wines. Of course, for me, the red is my favorite. Uh, that's going to do it. Uh, once again, thank you for stopping by, and we'll see everyone again next time.